Hey everybody, I want to take a few minutes today to talk about anonymizing your data. And this is basically the process of removing personally identifiable information from your data so that the people in the data set are not identifiable or the information that might be confidential or sensitive is, is taken out. And the question is, why would you do it? Um, there's a lot of reasons why you'd anonymize your data. The thing I want to focus on today is specifically with application to posting your data on the Enterprise DNA Forum. And doing so is really the best way of getting the best, fastest, most specific support you can on the forum. Um, that 98% or more of the people who provide um, support on the forum are volunteers. And so the easier you can make it for them to pr provide a response to you, the better support you're going to get. And in addition, oftentimes we'll get a, a question on the forum that says, for example, my DAX doesn't work. Why is it not working? And it may turn out that your DAX is fine, but your data model is problematic. And so there's no way to see that without taking a look at your PBIX file. And oftentimes when we query and say, hey, can you send us a copy of the PBIX file? Somebody will say, well, I would, but my data is confidential. It's highly sensitive, and so I can't do it, or my data set is really large. And so what I wanted to talk about today were just some really quick ways of anonymizing that data and scrubbing it so that you can go ahead and post it on the forum. So in addition to clearly describing the problem you're having, providing a mock-up of the results you want to see, so giving the folks on the forum a sense of what would a successful solution look like. Also being able to post your, your data, your data model, and the work you've done so far. And that's going to pretty much guarantee you get a fast response and a really specific solution. So there are five basic steps to anonymizing your data. And I'm going to suggest you, you can do it in DAX, you can do it in Excel. I'm going to suggest and show you today ways to do it in Power Query that I think are really straightforward and easy. And there's basically five key steps to doing so. Um, the first is eliminate unnecessary columns. The second, eliminate unnecessary rows. And then there's two types of anonymization you want to learn how to do. Anonymizing names and anonymizing numbers. And they're very different processes for those, but they're generalizable to names of people, names of companies, names of products. Um, and then numbers could be could be sales numbers, um, could be forecast numbers, could be any sort of any sort of data that you don't want to share in a way that is identifiable to your company or would provide um, somebody information they shouldn't have where you to post it. And then we're going to talk about breaking the link with the Power Query applied steps so that nobody can take the transformations you've done in Power Query and unwind them to get back to your base data. So let's let's jump in and take a look at a, a specific example. So here's a basic model that should look familiar to everybody. It's just a simple star schema. We've got a dates table, which happens to be our extended dates table that we've been talking about in our other video series. We've got a customer dimension table and then a, a small sales table here. Um, so let's just take a look at what we've got field wise. Um, in our customer table, we've got names, which certainly could be sensitive data, um, state and company also potentially sensitive. And in anonymizing your data, you want to think about what data is critical to provide in order for a solution to be to be determined. So anything that's not essential for that solution, just take it out. So in this case, we're going to be looking at um, a cumulative total solution potentially. Um, and it may be that we want to slice by by customer or by date. So let's let's keep customer in here, but state and company, let's say, is not critical to the solution. So let's let's go in to Power Query and let's start let's start removing information that's not germane to the to the solution. Okay, so we can go in here select state and company and just say remove columns okay so now we're left with kind of the critical information and the main thing we want to anonymize here is name 
So what we can do to start with is just go simply add column, index column, from one. And then from that index column, we can say add column from examples. And let's call this um, customer name. and start adding information in here. Customer one, hit return. And Power Query is smart enough to know that basically we want the word customer and then the index number. And so we can hit OK. And now at this point, we no longer need the index and we can take out the name that we can just use that customer name that we've created as a proxy for the actual customer name. So remove those columns. And we've got 100 rows. That's a relatively small dimension table. So probably no need to continue to take rows out of that. So let's move on and take a look at our sales table. And here we've got date, customer ID, and amount. Um, all that data is going to be critical. Date is going to be critical to linking to our date table customer ID to our dimension table, and then amount is the information that we, we actually want to provide. But the key here is that um, this, I happen to know, runs from 0 to 2,500. That may be critical information that you don't want to provide. So you want to think about a way to anonymize that data into a different range that is still going to provide information useful to the people on the forum who are trying to provide a solution. So let's think about this in terms of maybe a range of 0 to 5,000. Um, still going to be useful for that cumulative total problem, but doesn't say anything useful about the sales of your company. So we can go in here. And one of the things to know in randomizing amounts in Power Query is it has a very strange way it deals with random numbers in the way it generates the seed. And so in order to get a random number for each row, what you need to do is first add an index column and then add a custom column. And there are two M functions. So let's, let's just call this um, sales amount. There are two M functions that are very similar to Excel functions you may be familiar with. One is rand. Um, in Excel, which gives you a random number from 0 to 1. And then one is ran between, which gives you a random number between two points that you specify. And in M, if you just start typing random, what you'll see is basically the two number.random and number.random between, which is parallel to those Excel functions. And we're going to use random between because we talked about wanting to randomize a range between 0 and 5,000. And we just close that off, no syntax errors. And we just hit go. And you can see that we've got, we've got that random number. Now, in order to keep that number from resetting to a, a common number for each row, we need to add another index. And again, this is a strange quirk of, of Power Query. We can now go in here, change this to whole number. And then we can take these indexes that we created out, as well as the original amount. And then we're just left with that randomized index between 0 and 5,000. So that's pretty good right there. But then we take a look, and we know that this... Um, this fact table is 5,000 rows. And there's no need for a, an example that we're going to be posting on the forum to post that much data. So even though it's randomized, we think it's anonymized, let's take out 90% of that data. And so the way we do that, we go home, remove rows, remove alternate rows. And we start with the first row number of rows to remove is going to be 9, number of rows to keep is 1. So we're removing we're removing 9 out of every 10 rows. And so we should end up with 500 rows. 
which is exactly what we have here. And so at this point, we could just hit close and apply. But the one thing we have to keep in mind is one of the strengths of Power Query is that you can always go back and unwind steps if it gives you a result you don't want or if you've made a mistake, which is normally a great feature and one of the really powerful things about the Power Query module in Power BI. In this case, it's a problem though, because we don't want somebody else unwinding our steps to anonymize our data. So what we want to do is hit close and apply, and we're going to take just one additional set of steps to break that link with the, the applied steps in Power Query and make it so that we can't undo or nobody else can undo the work we've done in anonymizing that data. So from the data view, all we have to do now is just click here, copy table for our customer table, drop back down into Excel, and I've set up this sheet with two tabs, one for customers, one for sales. And we just go here, control V, drop to our sales tab, back into the data view, do the same thing for our sales table. Again, copy table. And then drop that into our sales tab. And then we just save this as anonymized data. And then what we can do is just back into Power BI, delete the customer table. And then the sales table. and then pull that information right back in from the Excel file we just created. So we go to desktop, anonymize data. And we see our customer tab and our sales tab. As we always do, go into transform data before we load. Take a look and we've got a valid date field, numeric field, numeric field, and then customers, numeric and text, and all properly anonymized. If we go back here into our source, we just see it comes from the Excel file. There's no unwinding that data. So we are good to go. All we have to do is now close and apply. back to our model and just recreate that one that one missing link to the date table and we've got a fully anonymized model that we can then post to the forum with no fear of disclosing any confidential data so there you have it that's the general approach your data set and data model may be different but the general steps of just deleting the unnecessary columns the unnecessary rows anonymizing names, anonymizing numbers, and then breaking the link with the Power Query applied steps uh, through the Excel transformation. Um, that, should, that should be sufficient for the vast majority of models that we see to, um, to revise and anonymize and post back to the forum. So I hope that's been helpful to you. Um, if it has, throw the video a like. Um, also, be sure to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV if you haven't already. Got a lot more content coming out in the future. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, look forward to uh, more of these in the future.